Hello and welcome to the Slovak Snapshots podcast, created by Actuality.sk. My name is Zorislav Poldiak and I'm bringing you the most captivating and important stories from across Slovakia. Each week we'll dive into the headlines that matter, from breaking news to heartwarming stories. So, whether you're a local or a global listener interested in Slovakia, we got you covered. It is 18th of May and you are listening to the Slovak Snapshots podcast. On Wednesday, Slovakia, with the rest of the world, stayed in shock since there was an assassination attempt on the Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico. It was the first assassination attempt on the member of the government in the history of the Slovak Republic. Wednesday, May 15, 2024, the government of the Slovak Republic holds a cabinet meeting in the small town of Handlova. After the cabinet meeting, the ministers were greeted by several dozen people. After a while, the prime minister also comes to the citizens, who are separated from him only by a fence. He shakes hands with them and greets them. Suddenly, five shots are fired. Robert Fico falls to the ground. Chaos has begun. Robert Fico is taken to hospital for hours of surgery. There is an embargo on all information. According to the statements of the Ministry of Defense and the future president, we know that Robert Fico escaped dead by the skin of his teeth. He was hit by four bullets. Although he is in a stable condition, his situation is still very serious. Emotions among some representatives of the coalition parties were whipped up to the extreme after the assassination attempt on Prime Minister Robert Fico. All politicians, without the exception, strongly condemned the attack on the Prime Minister, while most politicians called for calming down the situation. Representatives of Smer and the Slovak National Party SNS, in particular accused the opposition and talked about an upcoming political war. The news of the event unprecedented in the modern history of Slovakia, reached the National Council while the deputies were in session. This is your job. Ljubos Blaha, deputy chairman of the Smer party, who had just chaired the meeting, addressed the opposition deputies. But his more emotional speech came later. During a press release with other coalition representatives, Blaha blamed liberal media and the opposition for the tragedy. I want to express my heavy disgust at what you have been doing for the last few years. You, the liberal media the political opposition, what hatred you have been spreading against Robert Fico, what gallows you have been building for him, Blaha said emotionally. Because of your hatred, he is fighting for his life today, he added. The chairman of SNS, Andrei Danko, joined Blaha and firstly admitted that the leader of the opposition and chairman of Progressive Slovakia, Michal Šimečka, wanted to stand in front of the cameras with them, but they refused. Vážení zastupcovia médií, ja prvý hukot na médiá mám za sebou. Mr. Šimečka wanted to be here with us, letting go to Denik N, Danko said. Are you satisfied? Are you? The SNS leader asked, addressing the journalist while his voice cracked. For the SNS, at this stage, the political war begins. And now I guarantee you that I will no longer hold back anymore, reflecting what has happened. I want to tell the opposition to crawl into their pits. He also stated, similarly tuned statements were made by more coalition politicians. Environment Minister Tomáš Taraba accused the opposition of having blood on their hands. On the other hand, Interior Minister Matu Šutaj Eštok of the Hlas party is trying to reduce emotions and calls for peace among citizens. Zhrnul som vám to, čo bezpostredne po zadržaní povedal páchateľ. Emotions are naturally running high. 
But it would be very wrong to escalate this dangerous situation even further. If we are to be reconciled as a nation, and if such assassinations on democracy are never to happen again, everyone must show enormous responsibility, politicians, opinion leaders, social groups and the media, the minister said in a statement. After his statement on the social network, he later held a press conference with the defense minister Robert Kalinyak at the Banská Bystrica hospital, where doctors were operating on Robert Fico, a tragic day for us means a fight for the life of the Prime Minister. According to Kalinyak, the surgeon working on Slovakia's Prime Minister said his condition was life-threatening and serious. Interior Minister Matúš Utaj Eštok said officials would do everything possible to make sure that the people of Slovakia were safe. Please, let's not make hate the response to hate. That is an appeal to all politicians. I am asking this of all of society. Let's calm down. Let's not start killing each other just because I cannot respect another's opinion. Should I ask to get it? Robert Kalinyak added that he believed that several people should look in the mirror for contributing to the situation and urge journalists, the public and politicians to stop spreading hate. We share the horror of today's assassination attempt on the Prime Minister. We fear a further escalation on tensions in society. We therefore warn against the spread of false information about the shooter. We reject that he was a member of our movement, responded the head of Progressive Slovakia, Michal Šimečka. Opposition parties, the Freedom and Solidarity and the Christian Democratic Movement, which also condemned the attack on the Prime Minister, called for calming the situation. Former Prime Minister and the head of the Slovakia movement, Igor Matovic, posted a status on his social network condemning the attack on Robert Fico. Robert Fico is my long-time political rival. That is politics. However, as a human being, I wish him a speedy recovery and deeply condemn any violence. Fists and bullets will not solve anything. Please, let's be human. Who is behind the attack? 71 years old man is suspected of the attack on the Slovak Prime Minister. The weapon with which he fired several shots at the Prime Minister was in his legal possession. Witnesses have claimed that he first shouted at Robert Fico, who then approached him to shake his hand. Then shots were to be fired. The man was pacified by the police immediately after the attack. He is currently in custody and the National Crime Agency has taken over the case. Actuality Dadeske contacted the son of the suspected shooter. He is shocked by the situation. He confirmed that his father was in legal possession of the gun. I have absolutely no idea what the father intended, what he was planning, why this happened, he said. When he was asked if his father held a hateful relationship with Robert Fico, he replied, let me put it in this way, he didn't vote for him, that's all I can say about that. The man denied that his father had ever openly mentioned attacking or killing any politician. He also denied that the 71-year-old man was a psychiatric patient. The attacker was active in artistic community, he had several collection of poetry published. In 2016, he worked for private security service. At that time, he was himself the victim of an attack in a shopping mall in Levice. In the early evening, a younger man, apparently under the influence of narcotics, entered the shop and assaulted the man. The attacker had met with the Slovak recruits organization, Slovenski Branci, in 2016, as documented by photographs. The organization identified him as a writer and columnist on its Facebook page and published his texts. In them, the man criticized migrants or the state and expressed public support for the organization. The Slovenski Branci was an unregistered paramilitary organization with links to extremist and pro-Russian orientation. The organization ceased operations in 2022. However, 
Deputy Prime Minister Robert Kalinák said on Thursday that this man was only with the Slovenský branci to tell them not to use weapons. He was said to be a pacifist, who had only become radicalized in recent years. Matúš Utaj Eštok has repeated that this was a politically motivated assassination. The newspaper Plus Jeden Deň has published the footage of the attacker, presumably at a police station where someone is asking him a couple of questions. I don't agree with the government policy. The mass media are being destroyed. Why is RTVS being attacked? Why is Mazak being sacked from his post? Was heard in the video. The video was apparently made before the interrogation of the attacker at the police station. It is only a few seconds long and there is no clear background to its creation or leak to the media. This is all the information available on the attack on Robert Fitzo for now. We will update you about the new information next week. Until then, stay curious, stay informed and keep sharing those beautiful smiles.